This is Dallas Mavericks Today by Chat Sports. I'm Chase Senior, and we know that the Mavericks lost out on Jalen Brunson, so there was a hope that maybe they would go after Goran Dragic, the Slovenian, to team him up with his Slovenian buddy and Luka Doncic to be a backup point guard on this roster. Maybe they can still trade for a player like Colin Sexton. They cannot sign Goran Dragic because he is going to the Chicago Bulls. Jordan Schultz first on the report here on Sunday afternoon saying this, Goran Dragic signing a one-year deal with the Bulls per source. The 2018 All-Star will help bolster an already strong Chicago backcourt. And right now, I'm not sure that the Mavericks have a strong backcourt. And I thought by bringing in Dragic, they would be able to fulfill the void of losing Jalen Brunson. You get some familiarity in there with Luka Doncic as you're able to keep him happy after losing Jalen Brunson. And at the end of the day, Dragic is a pretty good player. Now, at this point of his career... I don't think that Dragic is a starting caliber point guard on a team that has championship aspirations and championship level talent like the Dallas Mavericks. As a backup, though, I would have liked to have seen him on this team. And I'm really fascinated to see what the Mavericks rotation is as of right now. Who starts? Who comes in off the bench? And how does this lineup kind of work out? And what moves could the Mavericks make here in the future to kind of replace the production the play, and the culture addition of Jalen Brunson. I've always said all along, I think that Colin Sexton makes a lot of sense. If you can get him around $20 million, he is a restricted free agent, though. I think that's excellent value for a player who can average between 20 and 24 points per game, baseline to baseline. He's a fantastic athlete, and he's a guy who can score at all three levels, and he might have a better and more explosive offensive game as compared to Jalen Brunson. Now, does it lend itself to winning basketball like Brunson? Maybe not, but you have to find a way to give Luka Doncic another running mate because right now the roster is bereft of that. Speaking of Dragic, though, did you want the Mavericks to sign him? The Slovenian duo would have been awesome between Dragic as well as Luka, type Y for yes or type N for no. Now you take a look at what the Mavericks have been able to do in free agency. Losing Brunson, no question a hit. I love the signing of JaVale McGee. This is a player that they really needed. You watch him in the playoffs, they were missing rim protection, a shot blocker, playoff level experience is something that McGee can bring to the table as well. He's also a fantastic athlete, and over time, the guy's really been able to rehabilitate his image in an impressive way. Three years, $20 million, I actually think is pretty good value, too, for JaVale McGee. When I just watched the Mavericks in the playoffs, I became very, very concerned at their lack of rim protection. I mean, guys got past the guards and the wings, and nobody was left there to at least alter shots at the rim. And I like Maxi Kleba, but I think he's better suited as a guy who can play stretch four for you, knock down some threes. I was impressed with what he was able to do in the playoffs after he really struggled throughout the regular season. What does the future mean for Dwight Powell? I think that he could get traded to free up a little bit of money, but JaVale McGee, a great acquisition for Dallas and something that they needed to fulfill there in that front court. Now make sure you subscribe to Dallas Mavericks today. We are closing in on 20,000 subscribers as this channel continues to grow. Yes, I'm Chase Senior. I am not the bearded man in Harrison Graham. Producer Coop does a great job of cooking up these videos as well. But when Harrison and Coop are out, we're still bringing you content. That's why you subscribe. It's YouTube.com slash Mavs TV. We've been pushing out a video, sometimes two per day. If you want the best Mavericks news and rumors all year round, just join the family and make sure you hit that sub button. Let's get to the latest on Kyrie Irving, who continues to be one of the biggest storylines in the NBA right now. Shams Charania reporting on Sunday morning. A couple of teams interested. A couple of other reports we want to get some from some notable media figures that we want to pass along as well. The Kyrie Irving latest trade buzz picking up as the KD Kyrie duo nears a breakup in Brooklyn. And I've said this ever since the Kevin Durant trade request is made. The Brooklyn Nets, in my opinion, they're not going to build around Kyrie Irving. So if they trade away KD, they're not going to move forward with Kyrie on this roster. It doesn't make financial sense, and it doesn't make 
business sense at all going into the final year of his deal given his lack of availability and lack of leadership skills to start building your franchise with him to kickstart your rebuild. So we first start off with Chris Haynes. He said this on Saturday night, Los Angeles Lakers, Brooklyn Nets actively engaged in trade discussions centered on a Russell Westbrook, Kyrie Irving package, league sources tell ESPN. And then he followed that up with this, Brooklyn Nets maintained discussions have only been preliminary at this point, sources say. Now, real quick, I just want to focus on that. If the Brooklyn Nets are willing to take on Russell Westbrook for Kyrie Irving, what does that tell me? There is no other interest out there across the NBA. That means that they have to settle for that type of package, and Kyrie Irving is the better player. Russell Westbrook, really expensive at $47 million. The athleticism gone downhill just a bit. The game has continued to trickle in a downward trajectory, too, over the last couple of years. If the Nets take back Russell Westbrook, I really think it reeks of desperation for just wanting to get rid of Kyrie and there not being any other offers out there. More from Chris Haynes on the Lakers-Nets trade talks. Draft compensation is an ongoing talking point for the Nets, and they want shooting guard Joe Harris, who is recovering from left ankle surgery and his remaining nearly $39 million owed over the next two years included in the deal sources said the Lakers have been disinclined to the inclusion of Harris and are instead seeking the insertion of sharpshooter Seth Curry as part of the arrangement sources said there's also this from SNY's Ian Begley who really does a good job reporting on the NBA he said there's building optimism on the Lakers side that a deal can be done perhaps as early as Sunday. It's Sunday right now. As of now, no deal has been made official. As for what Mark Stein had to say just minutes ago as we're reacting to this on our live show, this is why you subscribe. I know Irving has been in Los Angeles this week, but that's not the source of my confidence. It stems from repeated rumbles and circulation that LeBron James is rooting hard for Irving's addition to the roster. James, I'm told, wants to see Irving in Lakerland more than anyone. And we know that LeBron James has a lot of power. We know that he has backed up and supported Russell Westbrook over time. But we also know LeBron James is going to be 38 years old in December. He's trying to chase a ring. I don't think this is a long play. If the Lakers do acquire Kyrie, it's a year-to-year -year play. But for LeBron James, he is on a year-to-year -year basis right now, given his age. While he's still playing at an elite level, he has to capitalize on him still being in his prime, coming off a marvelous season at his age, and bringing in Kyrie would greatly help out the Los Angeles Lakers. Now, just moments ago, I did say that Shams Charania had reported on a couple of other teams in the mix. He said this this morning, and there are some conflicting reports here, but he did say, in addition to the Lakers, it's the Philadelphia 76ers as well as the Dallas Mavericks maintaining their interest in one of the more mercurial superstars over the last couple of years and last several years because you never know what's on the mind of Kyrie Irving. As for those reports, we'll tell you about them and relay them to you coming up here in just a few moments. But first, make sure you subscribe to our main Chat Sports YouTube channel. YouTube.com slash TV. We continue to grow like crazy. A big reason for that, all of your support and us just working hard to bring you the best NFL, NBA, and college football coverage. That link is below. It's YouTube.com slash TV. As for the conflicting report aspect of this, John Clark, NBC Sports Philadelphia, does a great job covering the 76ers and does have some inside sources on the inner thinkings of that organization this was right after Shams had had that report on one of his appearances. So without adding him, this is what John Clark had to say. I'm told despite reports, the Sixers are not pursuing Kyrie Irving. I'm told there were discussions internally about Kyrie and other players, but the Sixers never entered into actual talks with Brooklyn. As far as Kevin Durant, remember, he has a big say in where he will end up. And that there is true. As for the Sixers' trade assets, they did trade away Danny Green to bring in DeAnthony Melton, but they still do have some trade assets at their disposal that they could use in a trade for Kyrie or a trade for Kevin Durant. Obviously, the latter, less likely. Now, I would not include Tyrese Maxey in any of these deals for Kyrie Maybe for KD, but that's really unrealistic. I'm a huge fan of Maxi, his game, and his growth, but he is one of the best young trade assets in the NBA. Tobias Harris can also be dealt as a salary filler. Matisse Thibel, former first-round pick, has a nice little salary as well. He's affordable and two-time 
NBA All-Defensive player. Furkan Korkmaz, pretty affordable for a guy who, when he's right, is a good three-point shooter. And then Jaden Springer was a first-round pick in the 2021 NBA draft coming out of Tennessee. So the Sixers do have some player assets if they do want to make a big splash. Now, I wouldn't include those assets for a player like Kyrie Irving, especially if you bring James Harden back because there were those reports about Harden and Kyrie not getting together and not getting along. So I do think it's unrealistic, but we're just passing you along the latest news and rumors because that is our job. As for the Dallas Mavericks, youtube.com slash Mavs TV. Let's get to the Mavs on this front. Look, here's the deal with Dallas. You lose Jalen Brunson, and right now – there is a need to fulfill and a hole that you have to also fill. And for the Mavericks, are you comfortable with having Spencer Dinwiddie kind of run your second unit, maybe even be your starting point guard? I don't think so. If you sign Goran Dragic, what does that do for you as an organization? Not much, although I think Dragic would be a good backup point guard and teaming up with his Slovenian running mate and Luka Doncic, but... If the Mavs do want to trade for Kyrie, and that backcourt duo would be pretty fascinating between Kyrie as well as Luka, I think it would move the needle. Now, I could see Luka just being beside himself if Kyrie says some of the things that he does that are very mysterious and doesn't show up to the arena. But Tim Hardaway Jr., Spencer Dinwiddie, Reggie Bullock, Davis Bertans, and Dwight Powell, they are also all assets that the Mavs could use in a trade. Now, I did just mention Goran Dragic, he is no longer an option for the Dallas Mavericks. We're reacting to this live as well. He has signed a one-year deal with the Chicago Bulls. The 2018 All-Star will help bolster an already strong Chicago backcourt. That coming from Jordan Schultz. So forget everything I said about Goran Dragic. He is not going to the Dallas Mavericks. Kyrie's next team. It will be where? Pick the destination right now. LAL for the Lakers, DAL for the Dallas Mavericks, PHI for the Philadelphia 76ers. If you think it's going to be a different team, I want you to comment which team it is in the comment section right now. Appreciate all of you for making today's show a part of your day. And don't forget to hit that sub button for the best NBA coverage year-round.